labs not being very front line. Mm -hmm. So she said the first time and I was like, hey, I will be on TVs or on cameras. So, well, she did some convincing. And mm -hmm. I said, okay, because I also don't want to appear very uncompromising. So I said, okay, let's go. But <laughs> I was like, hey. I think because you're used I'll to be being first. in the booth at the back there, so. <laughs> <laughs> so that has also contributed. Okay. Yeah. But don't worry. It's okay. Oh, it's okay. It's uh, always be looking straight to the camera. You'll okay. be looking at me. Oh, it's okay. Here we are now. So <laughs> it's not we need back. to deal yeah. with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey man, so we can start ladies first or gentlemen before? I think we start with her. Okay. So your name, what you do for a living, something we don't know about you? Um, I'm Nancy. Mboani. Um, professionally, I'm an HR consultant, uh, a certified human resource practitioner. Uh, currently, I'm, I'm consulting as an external consultant. I am not working in a company. Uh, I love sports. Yeah, I think you can see uh, I'm very sportive. Yeah. Uh, a combination of a few. I can say I love athletics. If there is like athletics in the TV and the world athletics, I blew, I bloomed on the TV. I love uh, basketball and uh, I also used to play volleyball, but now I'm, I think I'm getting old and I'm not, I'm not very flexible. Yes, so. Yeah, so that I, I, I can also can. say I've also relaxed a bit. Uh, I think I, I, I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> I've relaxed. Yeah. yeah, not like I used to do walking to jog. Yeah, I think uh, I should go back to that. <laughs> should she go back? To yes, she should. Yeah, she should. because uh, because it does that. Every time and I'm in the morning, I'm feeling uh, I don't want to wake up. And he goes jogging. I feel like I shouldn't have gone with him. He comes. I look at him. He looks so fresh and ready for the day. Yeah, but I've relaxed a bit. No, I didn't think she admires what I do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now you yeah? <laughs> I have always suspected, but... Because uh, um, I look at him when he's waking up, he's dressing for the day, and I'm like, I shouldn't have gone with him, but no, I want to sleep a bit. He comes in, he's so energized and ready for the day. You can see I, I'm trying to pull myself, and for him, he's full of energy. So I'm, I'm, I've, 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 I've promised I'm going back to doing that. Yeah, after the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope that is motivational enough. Yeah. And after the wedding, then now she can start. Yeah, I actually have just uh, let it flow. I, I think she's mentioned that several times that she wants to do sports and maybe wake up early because I'm an early riser. But I have not wanted to push her because I don't want her to, to spend a day grumpy and thinking that I'm the one who pushed her out of bed. But um, it's good. I think she's seen it maybe with the way I am in the mornings. So I'll encourage her. And Back your name, what you do for a living? Uh, my name is uh, Wero Macharia. Uh, I'm, a Trump, I'm a translator and an interpreter. So I speak French. So I do conferences, international conferences. I interpret from English to French and from French to English. And I also do translations. Um, yeah. Please tell us something in French. <laughs> Bonjour, tout va bien. That's it. <laughs> that basically means good morning. Everything is on well. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Wow, you really me, 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 technically. I do, I, I do need to can do a, a, a different language. Okay. How did you start? What inspired? Uh, I'm not very sure, but when I, I grew up in Nanyuki, which is uh, very cosmopolitan, so I realized that very early in life I used to pick languages from different kids that I was playing with and then when I finished high school later I 
just enrolled for French classes at the Alliance Francaise. I did my diploma for three years. Then I was very lucky to go to France. So I went and pursued my university education in France. And lived there for like six years. So everything was in French. So I perfected my French. But uh, uh, I think now when I look back, there was that fascination for languages and maybe an ability to pick up languages very easily. So which actually helped me in my learning French. Uh, but I could say it's part of fit and also maybe luck. Okay. So do you converse in French in the house? When you're, when you're angry or when you're excited, do you throw in some French? <laughs> you know, he's too good in French and uh, he's just one that perfect person who's speaking French, but I'm not. Okay, I speak French. Uh, sometimes I find uh, I'm making mistakes uh, and uh, he's quick to say, Qua? Qua is like, what? And I'm um, like, I, I lean back and say, when did I even say it? <laughs> so sometimes, yeah, we do. When I, I'm somewhere out there with uh, some friends and I want to talk to him, so I want to tell him something, I can assume the group no one is a French speaker and I say something. But uh, when he's in that group, he rarely responded in French. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes I feel like he should have responded for me to know that he's understood. But okay, he will respond maybe in Kikuyu or Kiswahili or English. Yeah, so we do and uh, sometimes we watch. Uh, he, he comes with videos. We have uh, a DSTV channel that is French. We watch together. Uh, documentaries, he loves documentaries, he comes with them, French, we watch together and I can understand, we can go, I can ask questions, yeah, but I'm not as good as, he's very good, <laughs> yeah, he's. How is that for you? <laughs> um, well, I must uh, say that, uh, as she's saying, I'm, I'm, I'm very perfectionist, so that's, uh, that's a weakness, maybe with her, because I always try to make sure that she speaks correctly. Um, but it's just, a, it's just a personal trait, it's just a personal habit. I, I read a lot, I read in French, I read in English. As she says, we watch documentaries, we watch uh, like French programs. But the issue for me is whenever I watch, I always watch, but I also try to analyze what's, like, what's going on. So sometimes I don't just watch for fun. I'm watching and I'm like, no, it should be like this, or what's he saying? So then it comes back to her also. And I will want somehow things to be a little bit more pushed. I'm a bit pushy. Um, so it's not always easy, but I think she has learned, she has learned to live with it. Um, yeah, and she's very good at uh, just soaking it in. <laughs> so, although she will complain, yeah. oh, you know, you should, you, you should yeah. not be my teacher, but... Uh, I say, no, I'm, so, I'm not supposed to be your teacher, I'm supposed to be your husband. But, uh, yeah. well, yeah. That comes to how we met. That's why he's saying I'm your teacher. Uh -huh. How yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, give me two questions. <laughs> There's always two sides of my career. Yeah? <laughs> uh -huh. Well. Yeah, I was, um, I was teaching at the Alliance Francaise, and she was one of the students that were coming for the evening classes. And so she just happened to be in my class, but I never really paid attention because uh, I thought, well, I'm supposed to teach, so I shouldn't probably be paying too much attention to personal issues and personal feelings. Um, I also was at a point where I was going through a lot of changes because I had just come back home after around eight years out in the country. So I was still trying to make my way around and she was in the class that I taught and I think one day she requested, she, she just came and asked me to buy her t-shirt. Alios Francis was selling t-shirts. And then I said, okay, I'll buy you a t-shirt. But I didn't commit uh, on the particular time or date that I would buy the t-shirt. And she kept on pushing for the t-shirt. I think you can pick on from there. <laughs> What's triggered? 
No, actually, you see, um, I was keen on learning French, and uh, it was very good. I couldn't pick from the rest of the lecturers within the Alliance Francais that he was very good. You know, speaking, the way he articulate things, fluency, and um, I, I really wanted to be, to, to I, I used to get him and try to speak in French so that I can be like him. I, I can't say there was anything I, that I was feeling attached to him. It was a student-teacher relationship. And I, mean, I, I found him at the reception of Alliance Fonse and joked around, I said there were t-shirts. One was going for a thousand bob. I remember, and I'm like, can I part with a thousand? And then I seen, jokingly, actually it was a joke and he was there in French. I asked him, can you buy me a t-shirt? And uh, he just looked at me, I said, c'est toi non si? Okay, that's you, Dancy. I said, oui. And then uh, he just turned and told me, ni mwezi kona. It was around the middle of the month. Uh, let's see what happens at the end of the month. So I met again, I, I, we used to walk the same route. And I was like, you still remember my t-shirt? It was just, I know, nothing. And uh, one day he bought a t-shirt. We did not walk with him to the reception to buy the t-shirt. He bought. That time I had moved from his class to another level. I, I was a level ahead. So I had left his class just like two weeks earlier. So he brought a t-shirt in, in a paper bag. Ile nakumat paper bag and... Uh, that that uh, time, my lecturer was Thomas. We used to call him Monsieur Thomas. So he spoke to Thomas and told Thomas, that's for Nancy. So Thomas was like, for Nancy? Yeah, so he used to call me Mabel. Mabel is beautiful or <laughs> yeah. beautiful Nancy, Mabel Nancy. So after the class, then I was given, I didn't know what it was, but I, I didn't even know whether it was mine. So the t-shirt comes and uh, he's waiting for me at the reception downstairs. And uh, did you get the t-shirt? I said, yes. And uh, yeah, then we went, walked to the stage, he went. So now two weeks later, he comes and tells me, now I have bought the t-shirt. What do I get from buying the t-shirt? I was scared, <laughs> totally scared. <laughs> And he saw how freaking I was like, okay, can I bring it back? <laughs> so that innocent girl there thinking, you know, I've, I'm just not thinking he can joke. I'm thinking, what the hell does, does this guy want to pay the t-shirt how? The money? And then uh, he apologized for saying that. And uh, to me that was, he was a gentleman. That's, you see, I was not dating, I was not seeing anyone, so it's like, ah, this is a gentleman. And then after that, um, we started talking now. He would wait for me, we walk together. Uh, I used to live in Isli, he used to live in South B. You see the, the movement from Alliance Lyons Francais, and we talk, then uh, we, uh, he, 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 we used to write our telephone numbers on a sheet every day in class. I think that is how he found my number. And uh, at one point, he started texting me. So yeah, that's how it started. And we used to, the conversation used to be in French. Text messages, he's gone to Nanyuki, I'm checking on you. And one day he invited me for a drink. I think that's where we started now. That was in 2000, 2007. I saw him in 2006, that is when he had come from France, he joined the Alliance Francais. At that time he was working for the French Embassy and in the evening he was coming to teach. So he had a full-time job at the French Embassy, but I did not know. I thought he was a lecturer, but I, I never used to see him during the day. So after now we met is when he told me what he does. He works for the Embassy during the day, in the evening he come to teach. I saying, ah, this single guy is really working for the embassy and also want to work. So, yeah, and uh, that's how it started. Yes.
intrigued you. And especially that first question of, can you buy me a t-shirt? I actually cannot tell. I Maybe she should tell what, tri what uh, triggered that, but <laughs> I can't tell. I was just a gentleman who was uh, going around his duties, probably very detached from all what was going around. Um, as I said, I had just come back home from living abroad for like eight years. So there was still much going on in my mind and I was still trying to reintegrate back into, into the Kenyan society. I also knew that I needed to probably be with someone, but I was not actively looking. And I think maybe the fact that I was not actively looking, that was what uh, maybe made it even, uh, even better. So I, I can't tell what actually triggered her to come and request, I mean, and, and ask that I buy her t-shirt. But then I thought, okay, uh, for me it was an innocent uh, request. Unlike maybe what you get from people saying, can you take me out for coffee? Uh, for me that was very simple and maybe it talked a lot about her character. So I, I tried dodging, <laughs> but finally I bought the t-shirt as she says. I can't remember all the details, uh, but she was in my class and there were many people in the class can't really tell exactly how she was bold to come in and request that. But I also can't tell. I think when she came and asked for the teacher, then that's, that's when I said, maybe I can pursue this one. The others, uh, it's like, so, yeah. And how was it? Just the whole journey, the transition, now you can be able, the tension is out, you know, teacher, student, uh, and now at least you can just talk. Friendly way to how is yeah, the, the, the advantage was that the class was a class of mature students. So they were coming for the evening classes. I think most of them were working. So, you know, it was a class made up of mature students. So it wasn't very much, you know, like you're trying to distract someone from maybe studies. So, and uh, still it was somehow, I was somehow still very careful because there was that relationship between myself as the lecturer and her as a student. But I think with time, it, we just uh, realized that we are adults. And that, uh, curiously, actually most of the people I know who taught at Alios Francais, that's where they got their white from. So it wasn't very, very different. I thought I could have been different. I never thought that that's where I would get someone from. But uh, that's why <coughs> The transition was not very, very difficult because uh, I think afterwards she did not continue. Yeah, classes. it stopped at some point. Yeah, and uh, 